So if you switch to BSPWM from something like i3, one of the features you may be missing is tabbing. So today I'm going to show you how to fix that. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So I'm not going to take credit for actually coming up with this fix. I basically found this on a Reddit post a few weeks ago, but I haven't really gotten around to talking about it yet. Now, I took the code that was talked about in here and then I've actually forked it. So this is the original version of it and I've forked the code. So basically it adds some extra features and it fixed some of the things that I really don't like about the original version. So we're going to go with my version, but I will include both versions in the description down below. So if you do want to use the original, feel free to go ahead and use that. But I do prefer my forked version. So basically, let's just have a look at how this actually works. So the way it works with the default version is if I open up a window of tabbed, so that's the program we're actually going to be using for the tabbing. So open that up and let's just open up, say, a terminal. Now, if I wanted to add this terminal into this tabbed window, I can press super T and then the direction the tab window is relative to this ST window. So in this case, it's to the left. So I press H and let's see, super TH and then that actually gets added into it. Okay, so if you want to remove it, then you can go super T R and that'll remove it. And in the original version, it would have kept that tab window open, but I've made it so if the tab window doesn't actually have anything in it, it'll automatically be closed. Now, one of the improvements I also made to this is you don't have to open up a tab window first. In the original version, you did. So if we press super T and then let's just press uh, J, that'll actually add it into a tab window without you having to open it up by default. So this program has two dependencies. One is tabbed, which is one of the suckless utilities. Basically, it was made to add tabbing into surf and things like that and like ST and other programs but you can use it with pretty much anything that you can get the window ID of. So that's basically anything that has a GUI interface. And we're also gonna be using XDO tools so we can actually change the parents of windows. So as I said, the first thing you're going to wanna to do is actually install tabbed. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you're on Arch, there is an AUR package, but generally the accepted way to install suckless utilities is to actually install it from the source code. So basically all you would need to do for this is clone this and then you would go sudo make install. The reason you install suckless utilities from the source code is so you can actually install patches on them because if you ever use a suckless utility, you might know that they don't actually come with regular config files that are read at launch. The configs are actually compiled into the code. So that's why you generally install them from the source code. But however you install tab is fine. We're just gonna be using the base version of tab. So if you do wanna install it from the AUR, feel free to go ahead and do that. And then I said the other program you need is XDO tool. Now I believe that this is just available in the standard repo. So pman, or I guess we'll use the full version of sudo pacman dash s xdo tool, I believe, or it might be xorg xdo tool. No, it is xdo tool. So on Arch, you can install it from the xdo tool package. If you're on anything else, look at what it's called in your standard repos. It's probably gonna be something like xdo tool. So just find whatever that program is called for you. So I lied before, there's actually a third dependency and that is xwininfo. So that's in a package called, I believe, xorg xwininfo. So it's obviously gonna depend on what your system's using, but I believe on Arch, it's xorg xwininfo. On Arch, this is how you install it. So check whatever your package manager is for how you install it on your system. It's probably gonna be the same or it might just be xwininfo. So let's have a look at how this code actually works and then I'll show you my bindings within SXHKD just so you can see how to actually run it. So I've just got it in my scripts folder in a file called tabc. The original name of it was tabc.shar but none of my scripts files actually have a .shar extension so I've just removed it. Obviously, if you wanna put it on there, feel free to go ahead and do that. Now we've got a couple of functions in here. So this first function in here will basically let you get the window ID of the, basically the root window. So the root window is what everything is being placed into. It's basically your window manager itself. So if we've got nothing on this desktop right here, the root window is basically what everything in here is gonna be stored into. So the only window I have on here is the poly bar and that's directly in the root window itself. That basically is a rough explanation of how that works. So the next function in here will basically let you get the children of the tab window. So using xwininfo, you can actually pass in the ID of a window and then use the dash children option. And then basically what that's gonna let you do 
is actually list out everything that is a child to that window. So obviously if you pass in the ID for the root window, that would then list out everything that you've got in your main desktop. But you could also pass in something like tab, and then that'll actually tell you all the children that tab has in it. So typically most windows aren't going to have any children. I think that like Caden Live and stuff, when they generate their um, floating windows for things like your render screen or you have something like GIMP that has a color picker. I believe those are also considered child windows of that main window, but I could be mistaken about that. Now the way that I'm handling add is an absolute hack. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm checking if I'm receiving an ID for the actual tabbed window. So basically I'm checking if that node actually exists and if it doesn't, here's where it gets really, really hacky. So obviously I should probably be checking if that is actually an ID for a tabbed window, but this is kind of thrown together in the last minute. So I'll probably fix that after this video actually ends. But basically, if it's not a tabbed window or if it doesn't, if that ID doesn't exist, what I'm doing is I'm running tabbed in the background, then I'm sleeping for 0.1 seconds, and then I'm getting the ID of that tabbed window. Now the reason I'm actually doing a sleep is there's one reason for it and it's a really bad reason. So I'm not sure how to actually get that ID without basically freezing the program until tabbed is closed. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to open it up in the background, sleep until the program's actually open, and then search for the ID. Now, if someone knows a much better way to do that, I'll happily listen to it and I'll happily implement the fix. But yeah, in, a, in its current state, that's how that basically works. Now, after that, the actual add command is really, really simple. So we're using an option of XDO tool called window reparent. So this is actually a really cool option. So I'll just bring up the man page for XDO tool. So let's see, window reparent. Okay, so what this will let you do is it will actually let you reset the parent of a window. So by default, it's usually gonna be set to the so by default, it's usually going to be set to the root window, but what you can do is actually assign a new ID for it to be assigned to pretty much, or a new window for it to be assigned to. So in this case, what we're doing is we are taking the window, like say this ST window that we have right here, and then we're setting its parent to being tabbed. And what tabbed ends up doing is everything that's set as a child of it, it'll just make a new tab. That's pretty much all that does. Now, remove is also pretty simple, but we're also just doing an extra thing to make sure that we actually get rid of this tab window if we don't need it. So all we're doing is we're getting the ID of the focused window. So the only way we can actually remove in its current state, basically, is to be currently focused on the tab window. So for example, let's just bring something up like that. So in here, if I was to press super T and then R, we're currently focused on this tabbed window. So this tabbed ID here is actually going to be the ID of tabbed, if that makes any sense. And the window ID is the window we want to remove. Now I'll show you how I'm actually getting this window ID in just a moment, because that's also pretty cool as well. So that's in my actual SXHKD configs. Now, once it's been removed, so all we're doing is we are reparenting the window with the root window. So if you notice that function from just before, so this uh, get root window ID, that's what we're actually using that for. Now after that, all we're doing is we're checking if there's any children left of this tabbed window. And if there's not, all we're doing is we're just killing that window because we don't need it anymore. And then the last thing in here is for listing. So list, all that's gonna do is basically just output all of the children of the tabbed window. So there's a couple of things that don't really make any sense in here without seeing how I'm actually running the commands in SXHKD. So let's just have a look at that and then it'll probably be a bit clearer how that works. So SXHKD. Now it's actually not too complicated. It just doesn't really make sense without having this bit of extra context as well. So the first one we have in here is actually adding a window. So the way that I run this is tab C add and then the direction we wanna to add to. And as we saw before, the way it should work is if we press a direction and there's no tabbed window in that direction, all we're going to be doing is adding to a new tabbed window. Now I noticed off camera that if you pressed um, H or L, it doesn't seem to work properly. Now I'll need to look into why that's happening, but I might have just been doing something wrong. What it should do is just add into a new tabbed window on that desktop. And then the second argument we're passing in is the ID of the focused window. So the way that this is working is it's going to add the focused window to the tabbed window. So in this case, we've got this 
ST window. We are focused on that. So if we press super T and then J, that then added the focused window into the, basically the, uh, the tab window. And as I was saying before about the removal, the removal didn't make sense until you actually saw how it's being run. So the first thing we're doing here is actually getting the ID of the tab window. So in this case, it'll be the focused window. So we're using that BSPC query that we saw before. BSPC query dash N and dash lowercase N focused. So this means basically the capital N means we're doing a node query. Then dash N means node selector for focused pretty much. Now I should probably explain how the actual BSPC query works. Basically what it's doing is we are doing a query on all of the node IDs and then we're getting the node that is currently focused. So that's pretty much how that works without going too in depth to how BSPC query actually works. And the next thing that we're doing in here is getting the child that we want to remove from tabbed. And the nice thing about tabbed is it keeps the child nodes in a very uniform order. So it's very easy to work out where stuff's actually placed within the tabbed window. So all we're doing from there is then just piping that into head and then just getting the first result of that. And the first result is always going to be the node that we actually want to remove. So unlike I would have expected, it's not going to remove the newest node. It'll always remove whichever one is the currently focused node. So let's just test that out actually. So we'll add both of these into a tabbed window. If I can do that properly. Okay. Now in this case, they are both added. So let's try to remove the ST window first because that's the one that's oldest. So super TR, and as we can see, that removed the ST window, so that works as we would expect. Let's add that back in. Let's try to remove the LF window now. So go over to that one, and super TR, and that works as you would expect. Now, you might be wondering how I'm actually moving between the tabs. So if you've never worked with tab before, it's very simple how it works. Obviously, if you get into the more complicated stuff, like trying to rearrange tabs and stuff like that, it's gonna be a bit more complicated. But if all you wanna do is be able to move between the tabs, then this is how you do it. So you go control shift and then the direction you want to go. So either L or H. So right or left, basically. So if you've ever used Vim keys, it's very, it's very Vim key and also it's cyclic, which is also nice. Now, if you want to see the rest of the key bindings, it's all documented in tab. I'm not going to go into it in this video because I don't think it's too important to the general concept of what we're doing. So as always, my dot files will be available on my GitHub. So feel free to check that out if you want to see how I'm actually doing this for yourself or you want to actually copy this script itself. Obviously, you can also go to that link that I'm going to have in the description. But if you want to go directly to my dot files, then that's also an option. So one problem that you might run into is with this sleep right here. So this assumes that the window will be open within 0.1 seconds. Now, generally, that's going to be fine. As long as you don't have some weird lag spike, if you have a lag spike, it might break. So if you can come up with a better way to handle this than using sleeps, then feel free to do that. And if you want to submit a pull request and actually fix it, go right ahead. Or if you want to leave a comment and tell me why this is a terrible idea to do it like this, go right ahead and do that as well. And I'll be happy to fix it because I do want a better solution. This, it is a little annoying that there's this slight delay when you try to add into a tabbed window that doesn't exist, but yeah, I, I don't know what the, the better way to fix that will basically be, really. I don't think there's really anything else I should probably explain about this script. Everything else in here is pretty self-explanatory, really. Like, what, uh, for example, this XDO tool search does, that should be pretty obvious by what's written there, and if you're not sure about it, then I, I don't know how you've managed to make it this far. It's pretty self-explanatory by the options that are there. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over then. Obviously, by the time this video is going to go up, there's going to be a few changes. Like, I'm probably going to fix this thing with the tabbed ID, but I didn't notice that until I started the recording, and I didn't really feel like delaying the recording until it was fixed. So, once this is up, it'll be fixed, but yeah, in this current version, it's a little bit broken. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like I'm getting way worse at talking. You guys probably don't see it, but I have got way more clips than I normally do because I'm just stopping every maybe 30 or so seconds because I cannot properly string a sentence together lately and I don't know what's happening. Maybe I'm just more critical of myself. I don't know what it is, but anyway, hopefully it's not too bad and hopefully for you guys, it just feels like the videos are getting better and this is just a me problem and a problem with me just being more critical of myself. I don't know what it is though, so whatever it is, I'll work it out basically. 
So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So feel free to check those out if you want to chat with me or get video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so if you want to support the channel through my Patreon or any of the other means down below, feel free to use any of those. But obviously, as always, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my library and my BitTube. So feel free to use any of those if you want to watch my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. Now, you guys wouldn't have noticed this at all, but I've also got something else. So we've got a... Uh uh, microphone arm now, so that would have messed up the audio, but hopefully it's not too bad. So now it's not on my desk. I know a few people have complained about the tapping when I type. I didn't really notice there was a problem when I was editing, but it was like a, I don't know, $15, $20 thing to get, so whatever, I might as well just get one. Plus it lets me put my microphone out of the way when I'm not using it, so there's also that benefit. So obviously you're not going to notice anything different with the recording unless you are really bothered by the tapping noise. So, I don't know, I just felt like mentioning it basically. Now I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.